Carbon fiber blends are some of my favorite filaments out there. Not only do the printed parts look incredible, the carbon fiber also increases the strength and stiffness of the printed part. As an added bonus, these filaments are often easier to print with as they tend to string less and warp less than their non-blended counterparts. Years ago, we covered 3D printing with carbon fiber nylon, which is an incredible filament, but might be overkill for less demanding applications. Veda sent over a few of their new specialty filaments, and today we are diving into their A-Force PET carbon fiber. This filament is a 15% carbon fiber blend that is perfect for both general purpose parts and high temp applications. In this video, we will take a look at the filament specs, go over what is needed to print with it, and of course, do some 3D printing. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. If you've been 3D printing for some time, you may have heard of PET or PET, but PETG is definitely the more common of the two in filament form. Both PET and PETG are polyethylene terephthalate, with the G in PETG being for glycol modified, which has a pretty substantial effect on the polymer's properties. PET is commonly used in plastic water bottles and packaging containers. It is known for its strength, durability, resistance to chemicals, and slightly higher temperature tolerance. It's quite rigid and can be semi-transparent or transparent. PETG contains many of the properties of PET, but is more flexible, making it less brittle and has slightly less temperature resistance. From the standpoint of 3D printing, PETG is often the preferred choice due to it being easier to print. The correct material for the job really comes down to application. Moving on to the Fadus A-Force PET carbon fiber, this particular blend has some pretty unique characteristics. Comparing it to their own A-worthy PETG carbon fiber, we can see just how different the thermal properties are between the two. For one, the melt index performed between the two was done at a 50 Celsius difference. If we look at the determination of temperature ISO 75, we can see the heat deflection. While the PETG carbon fiber tested shows 74 Celsius at 1.8 megapascals and 77 Celsius at 0.45 megapascals, the PET carbon fiber has a ridiculous 112 and 148 Celsius, which is the highest I have ever seen for a PET or PETG. For mechanical properties, since the two tables on the Fadus product pages aren't in the same order, I took all of the data and tried my best to put them into a simple comparable table. For anyone that wants to see the exact comparison, feel free to pause the video and look through the testing methods. Do note that the megapascals are different in most instances between the two materials testing. In summary, the PET carbon fiber has much higher tensile strength and bending strength than the PETG carbon fiber but the PETG carbon fiber has about twice as much impact strength and higher elongation at break. Really, these tests are just a scientific way of showing that the PET carbon fiber is again going to be the better material if you need higher temperature resistance and a stiff, strong part. If you need a part that's going to have a bit more flex and in turn is going to have better impact resistance, then the PETG carbon fiber is going to be the better route to go with. Once again, it isn't about one specific filament being better than the other, it all comes down to your unique application. For printing, I am going to be using the Rat Rig V Minion that we built about a year ago on live stream over on the Modbot Army channel. For the extruder, we are using the BombTac LGX Lite. The main consideration for your extruder is that it has hardened steel drive gears. Since the filament is abrasive, it will wear through brass gears very quickly. Direct drive versus Bowden won't affect compatibility, but I do typically prefer direct drive because it does help with any potential stringing. The hot end is the Fadus Dragonfly, which is a relatively inexpensive all metal hot end compared to many of the other options out there. I'm currently running the Dragonfly on the V Minion, on one of my V0s, and on my Voron Switchwire, and it has been a very consistent hot end. The filament printing range for the PETCF is between 280 Celsius and 320 Celsius, so an all metal hot end is a must. The Fetus Dragonfly claims it can print up to 500 Celsius, but we are not going to be testing that out today. The only upgrade made to the Dragonfly was swapping out the stock plated copper nozzle for a hardened steel nozzle. Just like with the extruder gears, you need to make sure that your nozzle is wear resistant. For adhesion, we are using a powder coated PEI flex plate, which is my absolute favorite material to print on for 90% of all of my 3D printing. If you prefer smooth PEI or glass, you can absolutely print on those, but make sure to apply a layer of glue stick to act as a release agent. 
Over the years, I have seen PET and PETG crack glass beds and completely bond to smooth PEI. So again, if you do go with one of those routes, you absolutely need to put some glue stick down. The other thing I highly recommend is a filament dryer. The filament comes vacuum sealed with desiccant, but I still often try to dry moisture prone filaments for a couple of hours even before my first use. I also keep the filament in the dryer cooking the entire time I'm printing with it to help maintain consistency. Hopping into our slicer, I went with a bed temp of 80 and a hot end temp of 300 Celsius. I chose this for the hot end because it was in the middle range of the recommended temperatures and many printers with all metal hot ends will cap at 300 C through the firmware. I set the retraction distance to one millimeter and the speed to 30 millimeters per second. For cooling, Fadus does not recommend a layer cooling fan, which is likely to prevent any issues with adhesion. I started with this, but it had much better adhesion than expected and ended up enabling it from 10 to 30% fan speed, as well as on overhangs and bridging. This gave me much better results for small parts and little features. For print speed, Fadus recommends a speed between 30 and 90 millimeters a second, so I did adhere to that. Infill and inner walls were set to 90 millimeters a second with 5K acceleration, and everything else was scaled down from there. I have no doubt that I could have pushed this filament much faster, but I always recommend starting off with slow speeds and making sure that you're getting consistent results and you are absolutely welcome to ramp up from there. I started off with a small test print of a BL Touch holder for the NG Revo I installed last week. It looked great up until the top where the no layer cooling fan or minimum layer time really caused the layers to sag. I tested both the fan settings mentioned before and printing two at a time to give the layer more cooling time with similar results. Moving on, I wanted to print out some larger parts and I've been meaning to print out a few mods for my V0.2 from through the frame. I printed out all the pieces for his bento box mini carbon filter other than the fan cover along with the Gwiel static cooling fan. I was blown away with how well this filament printed and how all these parts turned out. I had zero issues with stringing, no warping, and very consistent layers. These parts are without a doubt some of the cleanest parts I've ever printed. Given the high temperature needed to print this filament, I was worried about how it would go, especially on an open platform bed slinger, but adhesion was great and the layer bonding also feels really strong. The only issue I ran into was with the stiffness of the filament. Since PET is stiffer than PETG and the carbon fiber stiffens it up even more, it is really easy to snap the filament on the strand. During my printing, I had two instances with the spool turning slightly sideways inside of the filament dryer, causing the extruder to have to put a bit of excess pull on it, which caused the filament to snap. This shouldn't be an issue as long as you have a smooth direct path from wherever your filament spool is into your extruder, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. At $69.99 a kilogram compared to $33 a kilogram for the Fadus PETG carbon fiber, this is definitely not a filament you would want to just print random parts with. However, if you're needing stiff, high temperature functional parts that look absolutely gorgeous, then I definitely recommend taking a look at the A-Force PET carbon fiber from Fadus. It's an awesome filament and I couldn't be happier with the results I got. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you had and me helped you decide if this is the correct filament for your specific application. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and if you have a specific filament you'd like me to check out that we haven't already tested, also let me know in the comments. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.